when you start taking away speech or mm -hmm. saying this is okay or your intent there we think was wrong, whoever you are, and in this case we're talking about the corporations and the gods up above us that they become, well, where, where do you stop? Now we're really getting into some territory where we're relinquishing control to these big companies and we actually want to relinquish control to these companies. You're getting into the point of intentionality. These companies are deciding what intent is. So they see something and they call it hate speech or they call it politically driven that violates our policies. So, you know, in, in the New York Post example, so you can't share that. Mm -hmm. Who are you to be the judge? Mm -hmm. now, now, let me take their side for a minute. Actually, it, we keep on coming to it, but I guess like Joe Rogan is so relevant in this conversation for so many reasons. But there was a great example about a year and a half ago, he had on Jack Dorsey, the founder mm -hmm. of Twitter and mm -hmm. also CEO of Square. And it was a great conversation. If you listen to it, he gets into how Jack Dorsey concepted Twitter, like what the thought was, how he runs the company, whatever. There was an enormous backlash after that episode f in online mm -hmm. from a lot of Joe Rogan's listeners who were screaming at him because they said, how could you not ask him about censorship and about their left-wing bias and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And so one of the guys who called up Joe personally, a friend of his, this guy Tim Poole, who was a – bills himself as a centrist reporter, but he's like a guerrilla reporter. He calls up Joe freaking out, speaking for the people. So Joe brings on Tim Poole for an episode after that where for three hours he's just like you need to ask this this is what twitter does yada 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 and then joe says well why don't i reach out to jack and see if he'll come on here and and have a debate about this yeah and to jack's credit he reached out and he said yes right away and jack wow. brought if you never saw this no, it's, it's it. must see tv but jack brought in i forget her name but it was like their global head of of legal or something like that at like some weird title but she handled like how twitter projects itself around the world and what goes and what doesn't and tim pool sitting across from them it was basically this very tense debate for over three hours and where i take their side and say i feel bad for them is that they didn't ask for this mm. okay when when they started this company jack started the company with the idea that like hey let's just take the concept of a group text but you can send it out to the world and maybe if the world fucks with it they'll they'll look at it yeah they didn't know that they were literally going to have the ability to control thought and patterns and how people latch on to an idea or a set of ideas and then get caught in these echo chambers based on what the algorithms push them they didn't realize that Mm -hmm. but they're at the helm of it. And it's been a while since you've had that realization that, ooh, well, shit, we kind of control how things work here. I mean, look, Trump got into office because of how he tweets. It's mm -hmm. a big part of what he did. And I know, obviously, they don't like him too much, so they're like, well, shit, he used our platform to do that. So I get it. It's, it's a very dense burden. But – there's – you get the far right to have these arguments to stand on because it's very clear that the ideology mm – -hmm. and I say that word openly – the ideology that's driving Twitter's policies and what they're trying to do is skewed very left. Mm -hmm. And so maybe even people <clears> – <throat> when I say far right, I mean like also very far right too, like people who really – <clears throat> far left, far right, in my opinion, really shouldn't be in the conversation. But, you know, it's free speech, so you got to let them do it. But you give them a base to then get other people who may be here. Like if you're not listening to us or if you're not watching us, I'm pointing like a little bit to the left of the far right, who now suddenly get pushed to go all the way far right because they see this and they're sick of it. It's mm -hmm. driven by anger. You drive people by fear and you drive them by anger and they will do really, really funny things. Yeah. And so I look at these platforms and I'm picking on Twitter right now, but we use the Spotify example with Joe. Obviously, Facebook's been caught on both sides of it. It's like they were like Moscow Facebook four years ago and now <laughs> they're not they're not left enough or or whatever and you name any one of the companies the, the companies where there's a huge user base and people go on there to exchange ideas and opinions there is this shutdown that's happening where it's skewed because mm -hmm. the people that work there have an opinion and suddenly they want to project it on everyone else regardless of what they feel mm -hmm. and so now you have a like i just mentioned that example of people just to the left of the far right or moving even farther right but you have a lot of people i'm noticing catching the vibes who are taking that quote-unquote red pill 
who may not have any beliefs that actually mention or actually line up with the right side, but suddenly, mm. boom, that's their home strictly because it's so bad over here and, yeah. and, and what people are doing is so blatantly shutting down speech that we have a problem. Yeah. And you bring up the point of free speech being the most important thing in the Constitution. Thank God you say that. Mm-hmm. I hope a lot of people say that. It is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. But when these guys sat down and wrote this document in 17 fucking 85 or 89, whatever it was, you know, it took six months to go to France by boat and you might survive or you might not. Mm-hmm. They, they, to their credit, it's the greatest document ever written. And the things that are still completely relevant today are amazing. But they also didn't foresee a world where people could exchange ideas like this, like mm-hmm. crazy, instantaneously, and no problem, and basically have technology hack into the conversation. Yeah. But it makes that First Amendment, where the free speech is, all the more prescient because this covers that and says, hey, there's some dangers to it. You're going to have some people who incite hate. You're going to have some people with bad intentions. But mm-hmm. it is worse to then start picking and choose, like with the slippery slope idea – what goes and what doesn't because the minute you do it then you take another then you take another then you take another and it's this by the way it's the same argument people could have with the second amendment Mm -hmm. like i look at the second amendment right and i'm a second amendment supporter but do i think anyone needs an ak-47 absolutely fucking not it's Mm -hmm. ridiculous what are you gonna fucking hunt with that like that defeats the whole purpose of hunting Mm -hmm. like the people that have ak-47 shoot it off the back of their yacht in in the Caribbean, you know, it's Never not an AK. I right, wouldn't know, right? So, besides the point, but you know what I mean. Like it's it's basically to be able to say fuck yeah, I can, mm-hmm. and and you don't need that. However, when they start coming for one or two, where does it stop? Government doesn't give back; they only take away. You know, so it's the same – now, to bring it back to free speech, which is far more important in my opinion. Sorry, Second Amendment people. It's just way more important. When you start taking away speech or mm-hmm. saying this is okay or your intent there we think was wrong, whoever you are – and in this case, we're talking about the corporations and the gods up above us that they become. Well, where, where do you stop? And what speech is right? And, and I don't mean that right or left. Which speech is correct? And how do you determine what's correct? Well, it's tough because they have something that we want, which is that experience of consuming content, that experience of engaging with other people and lightning fast speeds and uh, basically just they really are at the front of all this technological innovation that allows communication to happen at such rapid speeds across many, basically the entire world. And so... They have so much leverage because they have exactly what we want. And at the same time, people that are, I guess you could say woke or are just watching and seeing what's happening on these platforms and who these platforms are, how these platforms are dictating freedom of speech, it can be really alarming and appalling. I noticed this like four years ago when Bernie Sanders was running against Hillary in the primaries Um, on Reddit you had a lot of rhetoric that was so pro Hillary and um, it just seemed fake. It seemed like it was created by bots. And like there came out multitude of studies that showed that bot farms can literally, um, all you have to do is post something on Reddit, have a bot farm do like a couple of upvotes, a couple of hundred upvotes and boom, you already have a trending post and that's going to continue to go up. So like posts can be manipulated and um, different messages can um, uh, different platforms can be hacked in that uh, social engineered in that sort of way. And so I think from a platform perspective, if we're going to have this conversation about, you know, where does the bill start and stop? I think it should start at res- the number one part responsibility. Platforms can be hacked in this way. Platforms can be leveraged to spread hate speech, hate rhetoric, incite ideas that are hateful, incite ideas that are very negative. And, Then it comes to a point of where does it stop? Who determines what is hateful? Who determines what should be allowed and disallowed from like a content standpoint? And I don't, I actually don't have the answer to this. I don't know where the medium lies.